Hi, my name is Claire Campbell and I'm a soil scientist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison where I study greenhouse gas mitigation techniques from dairy, man dairy manure systems following land applications of that manure with tannin feeding trials. So first I want to acknowledge my co-authors Matt Ruark and Mark Powell who are um, faculty members at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'd also like to thank my funding source for this project, the Sustainable Dairy Project, which is part of the USDA's um, climate change mitigation and adaptation um, study to understand what are the best options for dairy production systems in the Great Lakes region. So today I'd like to talk particularly about nitrous oxide emissions and carbon dioxide emissions from land applications of dairy manure systems. Particularly feeding trials um, and changes to dairy net cow nutritional choices um, can change what the manure is going to look like later on the line in terms of fertilizer applications. In particular, we're feeding tannin to our cows, which is a compound that's found in a lot of different kinds of trees, uh, particularly oak trees and chestnut trees. Um, and when added to dairy cow rations, um, that can bind to protein sources through cow um, rumination in the cow's gut, um, which then results in more solid um, and stable nitrogen sources and manure solid sources. Um, and that means that there's less ammonia volatilization of nitrogen in the barnyard. So you're losing less nitrogen from these manures right off the bat. Um, tannins also have a lot of great other qualities. They reduce bloat in dairy cow diets, and they also can um, reduce the amount of intest intestinal parasites that you're going to be seeing from these systems. So for my study, I looked at three different manures. One that did not include any tannin at all, so a typical total mixed ration diet that you would probably feed on your farm. Um, a second manure had a small amount of um, tannin added to it. And lastly, um, I had a manure that had a lot of tannin in it. So in March and April of 2014, last year, we collected manure from dairy cows fed one of those three diets. Um, and then we stored it in bulk containers. So these are about four feet by four feet in size um, for 40 days in a typical manure storage system. And then we um, mixed that manure and land applied it on the 40th day by hand um, and then we immediately incorporated that manure into the system. Um, we incorporated that manure at two different nitrogen rates, at a low nitrogen rate of 240 kilograms nitrogen per hectare, and a high rate of 360 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. Um, immediately following that manure application, we then took that manure and looked at um, um, greenhouse gas emissions using uh, closed static flux chambers, just like this one, which have a stainless steel base that is constantly inserted into the soil throughout the growing season. And then a uh, portable lid, which we then place on top of that anchor. Um, and gas concentrations come out of the soil and are um, built up inside of this chamber headspace. And we can measure that increasing concentration to determine the flux rate of the emissions coming from that system. Again, we're, we're going to look at greenhouse gas emissions from nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide. And these are all shown over the growing season. So from the day of application to the end of the growing season when we harvested those emissions, when we harvested the corn. So for nitrous oxide emissions, what we saw most was that it was impacted by the manure nitrogen rate of application. So at that lower nitrogen application rate, we saw less um, nitrous oxide emissions coming out of that soil system. Um, something not shown here is that when we measure all of those rates cumulatively, we saw that the tannin did have a mitigating effect in nitrous oxide emissions, though that was not statistically significant. Um, so that suggests that there are trends that show that tannin added to um, feed can reduce the total nitrous oxide emissions. For carbon dioxide, we saw the opposite trend. The nitrogen rate did not matter as much as the tannin concentration in that manure. So here I'm showing three different tannins. The red dots correspond to the diet that did not have any tannin at all. Um, the yellow dots show a low tannin diet, and the blue dots show the highest tannin diet. And at the highest tannin diet, we saw that there was more mitigation potential of carbon dioxide emissions, which suggests that maybe that tannin source is slowing down decomposition rates of organic matter in the soil, which is then resulting in less emissions overall. So something else that we have to consider when we're talking about manure management and greenhouse gas emissions is what that looks like in, in manure storage. And we know that we lose a lot of um, nitrogen through ammonia volatilization in storage. Um, and we expect to see that a little bit throughout my study as well. So here I'm showing the total nitrogen in that manure, so all organic nitrogen, on day zero of the study. So at the end of that collection period, this is the total nitrogen that was in that manure. And on day 40, so the day that we applied that manure. So again, red corresponds to no tannin, yellow to the low tannin, and blue to the high tannin diet. 
And on day zero, you can see that um, there was a significant trend increasing the amount of nitrogen overall and in the, in the total nitrogen of those manures. But by day 40, when we've land applied that manure, those treatment differences had essentially been washed out. And what we think is happening is that the liquid um, content is increasing in those higher tannin diets, which could be um, losing nitrogen through some evaporative potential because there's more water in those systems that can be um, sent away. So um, all manure management is based on soil fertility. That's your ultimate end goal, is to make the best quality silage product for your cows to return to that dairy system as possible. So that depends on the soil nitrogen availability and also the response to cropping systems. So for soil nitrogen, um, we found that these tannin manures didn't really have any effect um, on the soil nitrogen availability. Um, there was just as much nitrogen available in the tannin diets as there was in a typical total mixed ration diet, which suggests that we're not really influencing the um, soil fertility, which is a good thing. We, um, no mineralization was slowed because of the impact of tannin. Um, we saw the same response in corn yield and corn silage quality. Um, there were no differences between the different manures given any end rate or the um, concentration of tannin in the feed. So that suggests to us that um, with increasing tannin, you can actually apply at a lower nitrogen rate, which will help um, you get more bang for your buck in terms of the amount of fertilizer you're using, as well as the amount of greenhouse gases that you're mitigating. So in conclusion, um, we think that nitrous oxide can be mitigated through uh, manure management based on lower nitrogen application rates and by increasing the amount of tannin. As well as for CO2, we're seeing the same trends. You know, the lower um, amount of organic matter you're putting into that system, the less greenhouse gas emissions you're going to see. And again, that manure nitrogen availability in the soil did not seem to be influenced at all by um, the manure systems. Same for the corn silage quality. So again, I'd like to thank my funding with the Sustainable Dairy Project. To learn more about the project, go to sustainabledairy.org. Um, thank you for your time.